My name is Benjamin Dome. I did my university at Princeton University, uh, medical school at Johns Hopkins University in Baltimore. Did residency at Cornell's Orthopedic Hospital, the Hospital for Special Surgery in New York. My practice has very much followed my training in that it focuses on uh, hip preservation, uh, including arthroscopy and reconstruction. So hip arthroscopy is hands down the most rapidly growing area of orthopedic sports medicine today. Uh, it has been well represented in my practice uh, over the last uh, decade and we've seen this very rapid growth uh, to where we're doing between four and five hundred hip arthroscopies a year annually uh, here. So that's a very uh, large number, one of the largest numbers around the country. In the hip preservation marketplace, we have somewhere around 100,000 to 150,000 hip arthroscopies being done annually, and that number is increasing dramatically, probably about 50% annually. Uh, so we'll see that number go way, way up. And what I expect to see uh, within the next five to 10 years is that the number of hip arthroscopies will actually exceed the number of hip arthroplasties. The significance uh, of this of the exact ROM hip brace in the marketplace is that there has not been a great hip brace for use after hip arthroscopy or for use after revision hip arthroplasty until this time. So the significance in arthroscopy is to protect things we've repaired, like a labral repair or a gluteus medius repair. The significance in revision hip replacement is to protect against dislocations. If a patient is not comfortable wearing a brace, the compliance rate goes way down. So if we can bring to the market a brace that's more comfortable, that's lower profile, that you can wear over clothes, that increases the compliance rate, then the brace is going to be much more effective. So the, the three motions we're worried about are flexion, internal rotation, and adduction, adduction. If we can address one of those with a hip brace, we're doing okay. If we can address two of them and limit two of them, then we're doing really well and the, limiting the two will actually limit the third. So with this brace, we've striven to limit flexion and adduction by applying the abduction moment. And in so doing, we also limit internal rotation. Uh, you can have a look at the abduction moment. There's a three-point effect uh, between having a waistband and uh, a hip pad and a thigh pad, as well as the, the thigh strap. So this thigh pad applies our abduction moment uh, and keeps the hip from going into internal rotation or adduction. Of course, we limit motion in flexion extension through dialing it in in this particular hinge and through control over the uh, waist and through the thigh. Now in limiting adduction and internal rotation, uh, the brace is designed to rely on a three-point mold effect. So we have first point is the waistband which conforms through the low back pad and the drawstring to the waist. The second point is the uh, thigh band. This goes around the thigh. And then the third point is the thigh pad, which gives us our ability to provide an abduction moment. So through this three-point effect, we limit adduction and internal rotation. The low back support that you see here, this pad with the web of uh, drawstrings within, uh, is intended for conformity to the patient's uh, low back. Uh, this provides greater comfort a lower profile design and also lends fixation of the brace to the patient's body so that it doesn't rotate around their torso, it doesn't rise, it doesn't fall, and it doesn't cant in one direction or another. So that actually we set the abduction moment when the patient is fit for the brace. Uh, Postoperatively uh, or preoperatively depending, uh, we can set the flexion extension. Generally in hip arthroscopy, I don't want the patient to flex beyond 90 degrees. Now because there's a little bit of play in any brace, we set the brace for zero to 70 degrees. Zero to 70 degrees on the exact ROM brace, and that effectively limits the hip range of motion to zero to 90 degrees and helps us protect whatever tissue we've repaired arthroscopically. Now in the arena of arthroscopic repairs, uh, I have published on uh, its use in uh, gluteus medius repairs uh, and in labral repairs and uh, we presented uh, similar protocols at national meetings. Uh, we also have uh, our post-operative protocols posted on our foundation's website uh, which is the American Hip Institute, uh, so AmericanHipInstitute.org and you can see some information about our post-operative protocols including the use of the exact ROM hip brace. It was designed for hip arthroscopy and for revision hip replacement. The goals with the brace are to limit flexion, adduction, and internal rotation in an adjustable fashion. 
Uh, furthermore, the goals were to achieve that with a low profile, comfortable brace that's one size fits all and fits both sides. So it's easy to stock, it's economically viable for doctors' offices and practices, and is comfortable and has a high compliance rate for the patient.